I did a video a while back on doing time codes and how to put those into a video, which is done through the data burn functionality within DaVinci Resolve. There's other stuff that you can do besides time codes as well. So I'm going to show you time codes first, and then we'll get into some of that other stuff. So if you want to learn time codes, we're jumping right into it. To do that, you go to edit page. You can also do it through your color page or your Fairlight page. If you go up to workspaces and data burn, and it's grayed out, uh, try going to one of those three pages. You're probably in the cut page or something like that. So if you click on data burn, we have a bunch of options here. The first one we're going to look at is time codes. So our record time code is going to be the overall time code for this video. So you can see I've got two video clips. So if I move my playhead, we can see that that time code is moving forward along with the whole thing. Let me mute the audio because we don't need that. You can do things like change it. So for example, if you want to, to have a different font color, that's no problem. You can change the size to make it a little larger and easier to read. Colors, text, that kind of stuff. Position, you can change the position if you want as well. You can also have it display for only a certain amount of time. So in this case, let's say display 30, first 30 frames. What's going to happen is it'll display for 30 frames and then it's going to disappear. So maybe you only want it to show for a certain amount of time. You have another option here called your source time code, which automatically popped above. I'm going to move it just a little bit to give us some more space. Now, what my source time code is, is going to be the time code for this specific clip. So as I move forward, you'll see here, and I move into that second clip, that source time code changes because it's now showing the time for that clip while the record time code is giving me it for the whole video. People asked in that other video, can you get rid of this RECTC? No, you can't. I think this is DaVinci's Resolve way of saying like, hey, if you're using multiple options here, you need to let people know what they are. Um, or if there is a way to do that, I don't know what it is. So that's time codes. A couple of other cool things that we can do with this though is let's say you want to do a logo that's burned into the video. This is where you would do that. So personally, I would probably just create a layer and then put my logo on the layer. That way I can move it around. But you can check logo and have one set. So let's grab one real quick. Okay, so I imported my logo. It looks like it's a bit out of place. So let's move it. down to the corner. So you can do stuff like that uh, with the logo. Notice I don't have an option of changing the size, so you would need to change the size of the original logo file in order to adjust that if you want. A couple other things here that also I think are useful, especially if you're maybe sharing this video with somebody else and need feedback. So for example, you can insert like shot scene. So if you've added metadata, which I've done a video on how to do metadata in DaVinci Resolve. So for example, I've added the metadata of take. Let's make this a bit larger. And let's get rid of. So you can see there, I added take seven, shot five. So you can add that kind of stuff that will also e export with the video. Uh, lots of kind of useful information here. Custom text, for example, that you can add. You can overlap information, so I get my record time code and my frame number, that kind of stuff. If you want audio time codes as well, all kinds of good stuff that you can data burn in to the video. So let's re-add my source time code and my record time code. Let's move it so it's out of the way. When you export this or deliver it, it will automatically burn into the video. Uh, so if you go, just go to deliver like you normally would, you can pick whatever. We'll just go custom, uh, test one. And I'm just leaving everything at the default settings. I'm not changing anything. This is going to export it as an MP4. Add to my render queue and render all. All right, it's exported. Let's pull it up real quick. And we see we have all of that in there. And that's it. That's an intro to Data Burn where you can add time codes if you want. Or as mentioned, it's got some other functionality there that might be useful when sharing projects to other people.